So guess who's still not mathematically eliminated from the postseason? That's right, the Oakland Raiders are technically still in it, and it's actually not that outrageous what they need to happen in Week 17 to get into the playoffs. I mean, they need four things to happen, so that's kind of the crazy part, but none of those four things are completely out of the picture. Of course, first off, they need to beat the Broncos. They're also going to need the Steelers to lose to the Ravens, the Titans to lose to the Texans, and they're going to need the Colts to beat the Jaguars. So, four separate things do have to happen. However, that being said, none of those four things are that outrageous. And honestly, you could even make the argument that all four of those things we should expect to happen. Of course, the problem is just that, will all four of them happen? Probably not, because four games going a certain way in the NFL, that just doesn't happen too often. But, hey, it's week 17 and you're still in it. I mean, that that's saying something, even if it is still kind of not exactly the way you wanted this ending stretch to go. I mean, it really just makes you think. I mean, you just beat the Jaguars and you beat the Jets and you're in the playoffs, I mean, pretty much. So, definitely kind of frustrating from that perspective. But you know what? I thought this was a good bounce back win after a heartbreaker against Jacksonville in their their last home game of the season. So, good bounce back win, I thought. And this will at least give some experience to a lot of the young guys who are on their roster and a lot of the guys who just don't have a ton of postseason experience or even big game experience. I mean, Derek Carr, for example, doesn't have a ton of big game experience, despite the fact that he has led his team to a playoff trip. Of course, you know, he he got injured and missed it. Listen, Derek Carr is not Aaron Rodgers. Derek Carr is not going to be throwing these Hail Marys or these Patrick Mahomes-esque off-balance throws, just the way some other guys in the league can. But you know what? That doesn't mean that he's not a very good player at times. And one of the things he does very well is... He lets the other players on his team make the big plays. He puts his other players in positions to succeed. And sometimes, when he doesn't have the talent around him necessarily, it kind of makes his stats not look as good and his tape not look as good. But when he does have good players around him, it actually can lead to some very good things happening. And this play is what I mean. It's a cover one hole, and he's going to have a receiver running that route right there. So... Relatively simple, it's Hunter Renfro, that's the receiver running the route, who is a receiver that Derek Carr does like, so Derek Carr is going to try to throw it in his direction if he does get open, and he is going to get open, as you see once this ball is snapped. I mean, he cuts early, the Chargers defenders are playing very far off on this one, so Carr is going to be able to hit him here, but look at the accuracy Carr has on this throw. I mean, he hits him right in this situation where Hunter Renfro was able to make the catch, and also the safety took a bad angle, which allowed Renfro to get all the way into the end zone for a touchdown, so I mean... A couple of things that had nothing to do with Carr happen on that play. Run for a great run after the catch and also a safety taking a bad angle. You know, obviously Carr can't do anything about that. But what Carr can do is put the ball in a situation where then Renfro can make the catch while continuing running. So that way, a safety who takes a bad angle doesn't have time to readjust. And Renfro, who makes the catch, is now able to have plenty of distance to get the angle that he wants and run all the way for a touchdown. Like, this play is another great example of it. What's going to happen for the Chargers is they're in a cover four zone, which is actually perfect for Oakland because they're going to try to run play action here, which will get the linebackers to move in, and then they're going to try to throw it over them and hit Tyrell Williams running that route right there. Hopefully this play can work and they can get a first down, which would be key. You're on your own 14 here, so you want to get a first down at least to play the field position game, if nothing else. John Gruden tends to pick his spots wisely for when he runs play action. This is the perfect time to run play action. Good call by him. And look at how well it works. I mean, if you look right there, the defensive back is almost running up to the top half of the screen. He's getting beat just terribly. Great, well-run route by Tyrell Williams there. But also with the linebackers who have moved in, this is just going to be an easy throw for Carr to make. And oftentimes, these throws can be difficult, but... Since the play action worked well, Carr is able to easily make this throw. But again, watch this throw. Perfectly accurate. Williams makes the catch, and then Williams does the rest. You know, Williams did a great job on that play, so some people might just give the credit to him. But at the same time, Carr is the one who allowed Williams to make that play. You know, Carr put it in a situation where Williams could easily just make the catch while, you know, in stride, and then able to run it for as many yards as possible. And a lot of lesser quarterbacks might have missed it, and Williams would have had to adjust to make the catch, and then turn around, and at that point, he might have gotten tackled immediately. Small things like that turn what could have just been a first down to the 25, you know, playing the field position game, into getting the ball all the way into Chargers territory. And also, you know, the Chargers safeties had a rough day, but, you know, I try to be positive on this channel. I'm about positivity, so we'll just move past that. I mean, it has to be mentioned, but, but, but I do think that the, the Raiders did a really good job on those types of plays. 
I also thought that Carr came in clutch when he had to, and this play is a great example of that. Fourth down and one, there's a minute left in the second half, 7-7, seven, seven, so this is a key point in this game. This maybe is the turning point of the game, where really for Oakland, what they're going to do is they appear as though they're going to run the ball, since it's fourth down and one, although admittedly it, it should be fourth down and two. I'm not sure why it's called fourth down and one. This is clearly two yards away from the line of, from the first down marker, but regardless, it's ruled fourth down and one. And for Oakland, they're going to set up as though they're running, but it's going to be almost similar to a play action, although they're actually not going to totally fake the handoff. What's going to happen is the halfback is going to run like that. That's going to be his route, and there also will be a tight end running that route. So those are Carr's two options on this play. So he kind of fakes the handoff, but quickly gets ready to throw. And as you see, he has his halfback easily open. Now, one thing worth mentioning is that his tight end is also open. This play worked out very well for Oakland. And honestly, his tight end probably could have gotten a touchdown had Carr made a perfect throw. But it is a higher degree of difficulty that throw is. So Carr, doing the smart thing, he uses his first read doesn't hesitate, and throws it to his halfback, who was then able to pick up the first down. Yes, there was a player who could have gotten potentially even a touchdown, so usually you would say rough read on that one, but on a fourth down and one, when you see you have a halfback open that's going to get the first down, you can't hesitate there. You have to just take take what's there, what you know is there, and yes, maybe every now and then there will be something more open deep down the field, but you don't want to risk that for the one out of ten times it's going to happen. If you see your halfback is open, hit your hat back. That's what Carr did. I think that's the correct decision. He was able to be pretty good in those situations. This one's my favorite play from the game. I love this play. It's a third down and one, and this one should be third down and in inches. So, scorekeeper, get get it together. But what's going to happen is that it's going to be just a straight-up play action this time, half back running to the bottom half of the screen, and then their fullback and a tight end will be running up to the top half of the screen. So, not exactly the same play as last time, but pretty similar, and watch what happens right when the ball is snapped. So first things first, both of his players who he could try to throw it to are almost open, you know? Like, you can kind of see maybe if this is a perfect throw, either one of these could get open. He could hit his tight end deep since the defensive back is turning his back to try to make sure he's covering him, but all that defensive back has to do is turn around and he could intercept it. So that would be a risky play, and also he could hit his fullback, but then potentially his fullback could get tackled inbounds. Even if he gets the first down, well now you have to take your time out. And now you only really have one more chance to try to get into the end zone. Otherwise, it could, you know, you have to just settle for the field goal. So since you only have 12 seconds left, you do have to be mindful of the clock to some degrees. So what is Carr going to do? Well, it's the thing that's never gone poorly for him before. He runs to the side of the end zone and even sticks the ball out to make sure he gets the touchdown. And you know what? Part of me just kind of loves it. Like, even though he's he's arguably cost his team multiple games by trying to stick the ball out and having it get fumbled out. This time it wasn't quite as risky as those other two times, but the fact that he's still willing to stick the ball out, I, part of me loves it. The other part of me, if, if I was a football coach I w and I was coaching Carr, I would like be furious at him, but since I'm just a fan, I, I kind of find it hilarious, and I, I just love that he was willing to do that. I mean, hey, if you're going to be the guy who tries to make a play in situations, why not be the guy who tries to make a play, and that's what he did, so... That was another play I liked. One more play I liked was this one. I thought that this was a very unique play. What's First, what's going to happen is that you're actually going to notice that his left tackle isn't going to do a great job on this block. As you see, there's just going to be immediate pressure. So right off the bat, Carr is in trouble. Okay, so this happens. It's a third down and four. So you don't need that many yards. Just make a quick throw. Try to get this first down. You see that Renfro is kind of open. But again, he's only kind of open. If Carr does decide to fire it in this direction, there definitely are chargers who could run over and make a tackle, so Carr instead is going to actually step up into the pocket, and he's able to do that pretty well, and now as you see, Renfro was basically in the same situation actually. He's still kind of open, but there definitely is a danger of a charger running in and knocking the ball away, or potentially even making a tackle. And In fact, if you actually look at those two chargers right there, they are both looking over at Renfro right now. They are both clearly aware that Carr is looking straight at Renfro, trying to make a throw in Renfro's direction. So because of that, you have Jalen Richard, who is actually open right now. I mean, nobody's paying attention to him, so he definitely is kind of open here. It's going to be a chance. It's definitely not going to be a guaranteed first down, but Carr is going to take this chance, and it works out. Richard is able to make a move and just barely get the first down. And that's just what Carr does, you know? He puts his players in positions to succeed, and he can only really go as far as his teammates allow him to go. I don't think Carr is the kind of guy who will be just pushing his team, kicking and screaming into a playoff spot. But if he ha if he's on a playoff team, 
he will do a lot more than some guys who are even more talented than him because he puts his players in a position to succeed. And that's why I've always been a big fan of his, even if he doesn't necessarily put up the numbers that some other guys put up. I do think that this season is very different if Antonio Brown wasn't a head case and he stayed on the team for the whole season. I think they're easily a playoff team if that's the case. And also, I think they're easily a playoff team if their defense just stayed healthy and didn't get suspended, you know? I think that they had some things working against them, but I do think that the Raiders are doing a good job of building towards next season. I think they're getting some crucial experience under the belt. And you know what? Maybe it'll find a way to squeak in, but most likely they probably won't. However, this is still a win in my opinion. Getting this close to the postseason after being, you know, just just one one year away from being the fourth overall pick, I think it's definitely a win in my opinion. I do still think that that sixth seed is anybody's for taking at this point. It seems like nobody wants it. I mean, the Pittsburgh Steelers losing to the Jets. For some reason, the Jets just keep winning games that they shouldn't be winning for whatever reason. I don't know what's going on with them, but... You know, they lost to the Jets and looked pretty bad at doing it, honestly. And then you also have the Titans, who, I mean, they put up a fight against the Saints. Can't really blame them, but that that sixth seed is definitely up for the taking. And you could totally see the Texans beating the Titans. That's not out of the question. You could totally see the Steelers losing to the Ravens, even if the Ravens start RG3. RG3 is still pretty decent, you know, good backup in my opinion. And it's honestly hard to imagine the Jaguars beating the Colts especially when the Jaguars seemingly have given up on their season, although they did beat the Raiders, so I guess who knows. Honestly, I actually think that there's a, a very real chance that all three of those things happen, and then the Raiders just lose to the Broncos. I think that could absolutely happen, and that would just be the most Oakland Raiders thing ever, but we'll see what happens. At least, you know, week 17, you have, have a reason to turn on your TVs. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for watching.